Good morning everybody and welcome to today's video. The FIFA World Cup is well and truly underway and since it's been hosted in a country which is literally on the doorstep to the United Arab Emirates, which is one hour away from me by plane, I thought it would be rude not to go and check it out for myself and see first of all what the city is like, but also to have my very first experience of a World Cup, a FIFA World Cup. So join me on my journey as I will share with you as much as I can my experience of the World Cup and of this city which I've never been to before. So we made it, the flight was fairly civilized apart from the pilot who decided to ram the plane into the runway. Now I'm going to check out some, what appears to be some Qatari coffee. Can I have a shot of coffee my man? What makes this so special? He makes it? Yes. He's a special coffee master. Nice. Yes. Strong. It's super strong. Strong and there's not much, but as long as it's potent, that's all I care about. The two things are famous in Qatar. One thing, coffee, and another, beats. And football. Football. And football. And football. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's going to win the World Cup? Oh, well, I think Portugal. Because I am the final for Lando. Ah. Hello. Good morning, sir. Can we go to the W Hotel? W Hotel? Yeah. You're from Qatar? Sri Lanka. What? Sri Lanka. Oh, Sri Lanka. Ah. ah. To be honest, I think you should be you should be on that building there with your shirt off. <laughs> We're in, your, good. in your first shorts, you know. That is sick. That's serious appetite. They're literally everywhere. The uh, first impressions, it's a very beautiful city. It looks kind of like similar to Dubai, similar to Abu Dhabi. Very clean, very modern. You can definitely tell the World Cup is on because all the buildings are literally just like painted with FIFA signs and footballers. Like they're really taking it seriously. They put they have put a lot of effort into this. Japan. Come on, England. Japan. Japan. Thank you. What is this? Mingo banana strawberry. Ooh. Best things to do. These are all places that my friends have tried and can recommend for sure. Are you coming with us, yeah? No, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just touched down at one of the FIFA football fan zones, the 900 Park. And I must say, there's a, a recurring theme here. Every single place we go, we have to walk through metal detectors. So uh, they're really taking the safety very seriously here. It's a rowdy one. <laughs> Should we get stuck in? Coming out? Yeah, of course, mate. Course. Yeah? Oh, it's fucking great time, mate. Great time. Booze everywhere. Yeah, of course. Even in the stadium? No, not in the stadium, but like beforehand. Fucking look at the fans on. Are you steaming? How many of you are? Uh, <laughs> ten. Whoa! <laughs> this is ten. Give her a kiss, mate. Yeah. <laughs> See who do you think's gonna win? Oh, I think the referee's gonna win. VAR. Yeah. VAR. <laughs> V-A-R, V-A-R. I'll see you in the birdcage tonight. Shiga boogala. So we just got off the metro. It wasn't too bad, we had to get two separate trains, but it was clean, it was efficient, it was certainly rowdy. And uh, now we are outside of the stadium. We're about to go inside. Legend. <laughs> Representing Grimsby Town here. You've been here for a week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly. So good. Like so good. Can you tell everyone how this World Cup has been? It has been very good. Whatever is being said elsewhere, don't listen to it.
Ah, uh, good morning, Qatar. So yesterday was absolutely fantastic. Couldn't have asked for a better first experience at the World Cup, watching my home country win 3-0. It was actually quite funny because obviously we're playing Wales, so it felt like I was back in the UK because all the fans around me were English speaking. Stadium was immaculate. No drama, no violence, no problems. Everything was very smooth, well organized. Only minor setback was getting the train back to uh, downtown. There was a bit of a queue, but apart from that, it was absolutely fine. Strong police presence. Uh, they clearly don't want anyone kicking off and anyone being violent. And to be honest with you, that's one thing which I notice. If I compare, say for example, when I was back in the UK watching football games, people are drinking a lot. And whenever they drink, that's usually when they get violent and there's usually fights and all sorts of kickoffs. But that's something you definitely don't see here. And you can imagine that's something they are trying to prevent. So they're doing a pretty good job of that. The hotel situation, I've not spoken about the hotel much. Um, as you can imagine, being the World Cup, all the hotels around Qatar, uh, well, Doha in particular, absolutely ramped up the prices. It is what it is. It's not exactly a cheap trip. There's a lot of people who want to be here right now, but um, it's got to take the hit. I'm staying at the W because it's the W and it's certainly a bit of a vibey hotel. There's a bar downstairs, there's a club as well, so um, there's a lot to do, a lot on offer. So this is a map of Doha. This is where I currently am, city center. I'm gonna be moving to the Pearl, which is a man-made island which has been recently developed. And I think I'll be spending quite a lot of time around here. There's quite a lot I'm not gonna have time to explore, unfortunately, especially this region here, which I believe is the old Doha. Apparently the souk is really worth visiting, but it's crazy to see how a city which isn't that huge is absolutely littered with stadiums. I think they've built eight stadiums just for this World Cup. So I'm currently just scootering around on uh, one of the many e-scooters which are lying about here. And I've noticed uh, there's not really many people around. I don't know if this is just like a thing in Qatar that like no one's very active in the morning. Uh, I mean, it is Saturday, so I guess it's their Sunday here technically. But I'm just by the uh, official main higher FIFA fan festival. This is where there's about, I don't even know how many people are gonna be coming here, tens of thousands of people. But right now it's very quiet. I'm gonna try and meet up with uh, one of the women who's actually organizing this and ask her a few questions and see how, uh, how it's all been going so far. We've been open every single day. We're open every single day of the tournament. Um, we're screening all of the matches. Got live performances, music, um, an how, ice skating arena. How many people come here every day? Uh, between our capacity is 3,500. Okay. So. Uh, and then people have to buy tickets beforehand yes. to get in. Whether you have a higher card or not. This FIFA fan zone, you can't consume alcohol. But no. In some of the other ones, you can. Yes. So we we are a family friendly fan zone space, okay. um, and so because of that, we decided we were going to be a dry yeah. zone. No alcohol. That makes sense. Yeah. So far, I'm a little bit disappointed by the daytime activity. It's currently 1.30 and I've just been scootering around trying to find a vibe, a bit of liveliness, but I haven't found anything. It's very quiet and um, there's not actually a lot of people around. I mean, there's a few, a lot of people walking around with different football tops from different countries but I was kind of hoping for I don't know something interesting to do during the daytime I feel like at the moment things don't really start to get going until four or five o'clock just before the first matches maybe I'm looking in the wrong places but as far as I know this is it should be one of the main touristy areas so I was just about to get an Uber home, but uh, someone has very kindly offered to uh, give me a lift. You're a resident here? Yeah, a resident here for the last seven years. <laughs> and you, you like Qatar? I like it, I like it. I prefer Dubai, but mm. yeah, Qatar is great, yeah. What would you say the, the main differences are? I would say obviously the size, and then Qatar is a bit more conservative than, uh, than Dubai. Mm -hmm. And for sure there are less distractions here. 
How have you uh, found the World Cup so far? I find it I found it a bit weird. I mean, it's uh, it's a World Cup, and yeah, there, there's people, but we were expecting way more people, and people are like like concentrated in spots here in Doha. Like for example, right now we are in a very touristic spot, but you you can see that yeah. there's the, there's no people around. Now I'm currently on the Pearl, and it's predominantly made up of residential buildings, restaurants, cafes, and other things. It looks quite nice. It reminds me of uh, JBR and the Marina in Dubai. Seems like a nice spot. I was here a little bit earlier on. It seemed quite quiet, but I've uh, spoken to a few people, and they say that it uh, it becomes very lively at night time once the sun sets. <laughs> Okay, so I found out where everyone has been hiding. There's a spot on the pearl called the Kwana Quarter. And yeah, it's absolutely packed full of people, full of different nationalities. There's flags all over the streets. All the buildings are painted differently. Cool spot. God, I found two Brazilians. Do you want to go to the Brazil game today? <laughs> For sure. So just at the airport on the way home, my trip has come to an end. Unfortunately, there's a lot more I would like to see and do here in Qatar, but my time has run out for now. So one hour trip back to Dubai, and I'm gonna give you my final review of this trip and my experience of the World Cup. So here's my review. First of all, I would say overall, it was well organized and it was a pretty decent first attempt at hosting a World Cup for a Middle Eastern country. A couple of downsides, some minor things like in the stadium they were only accepting payments via Visa, so if you had a MasterCard they just wouldn't accept it, so that was very annoying. Uh, the higher card and application was generally pretty confusing, I thought. 
they kept changing the rules and it wasn't made very clear who could actually go into the country. So say for example, I had my cameraman who I wanted to bring with me, but from what I read, they said that people who did not have tickets for any of the games would not be allowed into the country, which I thought was a little bit unfair. And I think that was one of the reasons why it felt as though there was something missing there. I mean, I obviously have nothing to compare it to. It was my first World Cup experience, but I felt like there should have been a little bit more atmosphere and more going on, particularly in the daytime. But I think because they were restricting how many people they were letting into the country, it kind of made sense because it is a very small city and the whole of the World Cup is taking place in this one city. So for them to not try and regulate how many people are coming into the country and into the city makes sense because otherwise it would have been overwhelmed and it would have been a disaster. So that was a bit of a downside and uh, it would have been better if the rules were a little bit clearer and they weren't changing things last minute. Let's say, for example, you know, being allowed to drink in the stadium. And then in terms of the migrant workers, I think this is, this is, a, this is a touchy topic. And without a doubt, the construction workers who were building all the facilities for the World Cup, they definitely had a very, very rough time. And particularly in the summer months when it gets really hot and really humid, I can't imagine what it must have been like to work on a construction site. But the question is, I don't know if this is the responsibility of the host country or of the construction companies who are employing these migrant workers. So. Something definitely needs to be done and hopefully because there's been so much limelight on Qatar and this issue things are going to change and there's going to be more rules and regulations in the first place and hopefully this is also going to spread out throughout the Middle East and the rest of the world because it isn't just an issue with Qatar it's the whole of the Middle East region you know Saudi Arabia the UAE a lot of this is unfortunately going on it has been going on for a long time I just think it's very unjust that Qatar all of a sudden gets all of this negative uh, attention regarding that subject when you know it's been going on for so long where have all these voices been in the first place beforehand so um, like I said hopefully things change and I do feel bad for a lot of those construction workers who had to undergo those brutal conditions Piers Morgan did a very interesting interview recently where you could see both sides of the story so I really do recommend that you watch that but overall, my experience was very good and I will without a doubt be going back to Qatar to explore and see what else it has to offer. And as I said before, pretty decent effort for a Middle Eastern country hosting the World Cup, particularly a country of such a small size, both geographically and in terms of population. Thank you all for watching and sticking all the way to the end. Much appreciated and I hope you have enjoyed the video. So uh, give it a thumbs up if you had enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.